Zero. Welcome to this online video tutorial. My name is Francisco José Díaz Galeano and I'm currently working under the supervision of Professor Amadeo Fernández Alba in the URL FV. This video tutorial will discuss common issues associated with some LCMS amenable compounds and some strategies to avoid them whenever it is possible to do so. Sometimes there is not a readily available, easy and inexpensive solution, but nevertheless, being aware of the situation might provide laboratories with an advantage. A very common situation for a laboratory is facing a sample for which the presence or absence of a compound is not crystal clear. In these cases, there is a risk of reporting false positives or false negatives. In the following slides, we will present some false positives and false negatives we have recently encountered during the evaluation of the results of proficiency testing. Furthermore, we will show some LC amenable compounds which share mass transitions and thus are prone to false identification. Recently, the URL V carried out a proficiency test in avocado. Let me show you some of the false negatives and false positives reported by some participants alongside the source of error. This laboratory, for instance, reported a false positive result for asymphosmethyl and concurrently a false negative result for Fosmet, which was indeed present in the sample. On the left, we have drawn the chemical structures for Fosmet on the top and azymphosmethyl on the bottom. As you may observe, these compounds present a somewhat similar structure, sharing the phosphorodithioid moiety. It stands to reason that the laboratory which reported the false positive for azymphosmethyl found a better peak shape when using slightly different mass transitions during analysis. Nevertheless, these two compounds which, as mentioned, are quite similar and allude to close one to another, may give rise to interferences in the other's acquisition window, so care must be taken when reporting them. Resuming the previously shown list, the next one is Etofenprox. This pesticide was reported by one laboratory as present in the EUPT sample, however, this was a false positive result, as uh, Toffenprox was not part of the present pesticides. As opposed to the case of Fosmet and Azymphosmethyl, the false positive result was not due to another pesticide, but due to a, um, a constructed matrix component that alluded at a very similar retention time as Toffenprox. Perhaps in the case of the reporting laboratory with slightly different chromatography, the same retention time. This matrix interference shared at least three mass transitions with the Toffenprox, although the ion ratio did not match whatsoever that of Toffenprox. And even in the case of perfect coelution, due to the ion ratio differences, this peak should not be reported as a Toffenprox. The Digisante document proposes a strategy to confirm if a signal corresponds to a pesticide or not. This strategy consists in adding increasing concentrations to the sample of the suspected pesticide and observing their chromatographic behavior. In this case, as can be observed from the chromatographs, this signal is not a Toffenprox, as the interference abundance is constant, whereas the peak corresponding to a Toffenprox rises with increased concentrations. Let's take a look at the previous slide again, but now zoomed in. Lastly, let's take a look at another false positive reported by a participant, tebuconazole, which was not present in the test item. As in the case of Fosmed, again, there is a pesticide which is present in the EUPT sample with a mass transition in common with tebuconazole, prochloras. At 
this case, there are less similarities between both chemical structures. However, it is possible that a prochlorase fragment has mass transitions in common with tebuconazole, at least one. Although the precursor ions in each case do not match, 308 for tebuconazole and 376 for prochlorase, looking at these acquisition windows, at least one prochlorase fragment may appear in tebuconazole's acquisition window, and thus give rise to false positive reports. Now let's move on from false positives and false negatives from EUPTs and let's talk about, about other common compounds that share mass transitions and dilute close one to another, and hence may be the source of inaccurate reporting. The first of these pairs of compounds are chlorpyrifos and fempropathrine when analyzed by LCMS. Although fempropathrine is normally found as a stable ammonium adduct whenever there is ammonium in the mobile phase, the proton adduct is also present. Chlorpyrifos can be found as two equally abundant isotopologues, one with three chlorine-35 atoms and one with two chlorine-35 atoms and one chlorine-37 isotope. The isotopologue with three chlorine-35 atoms shares unit mass with fempropathrine, and furthermore, has at least two mass transitions in common with it. Laboratories should keep this fact in mind when reporting any of these two compounds, as in checking for the presence of the other. However, although they are somewhat close in retention time, in most methods their retention times should be different enough. Another common pesticide, malathion, shares its unitary mass with one dimethylvinfos isotopologue. As in the case of chlorpyrifos, dimethylvinfos contains three chlorine atoms and two equally abundant isotopologues. One dimethylvinfos isotopologue shares unit mass with malathion and, due to their similar chromatographic behavior, are prone to coevolution. The interference in the case of malathion cannot be avoided. However, in the case of dimethylvinfos, using the second most abundant isotopologue, one with one chlorine-37 isotope, would prevent the common mass transition of malathion to appear in dimethylvinfos acquisition window. Probazine and terbutylazine are constitutional isomers, sharing at least one mass transition, M to Z230, precursor ion to M to Z146 fragment ion. Again, due to their similarities, they can be present together in the other's acquisition window as interferences, and depending on the optimized mass transitions, potentially both transitions can be inadequately identified as originating from the wrong compound. And finally, a classic example of compounds with mass transitions in common are aldicarbsulfone and butoxycarboxin. Although iron ratios are not exactly identical, they can be close enough for false positives and false negatives, so special care should be taken with this pair of compounds, which, as in another previously seen case, are constitutional isomers too. Until now, we have discussed several issues associated with false positives, false negatives, and also compounds with mass transitions in common. Let's review everything we have covered up until now. First, the case of co-extracted matrix interferences found in the avocado EUPT that interfere in the analysis of atofenprox. Remember that all three monitor mass transitions are affected in this case, from precursor ion 394.2 to fragment ions 177.3, 359.1, and 107.1. Fortunately, the ion ratios for the co-extracted matrix interference are 
widely different to those of the Toffenbrock's standard, so false positive reporting should not happen. Let's continue reviewing the rest of compounds with common mass transitions. It is a good idea for the laboratories to include the information regarding all these pairs in their own database of common mass transitions, which most laboratories already have, if there is any of these transitions that they are not aware of. The case of phosmet and ethinphosmethyl was detected within a EUPT on avocado. The troublesome mass transition is 318 precursor ion to 133 in the case of phosmet and to 132.1 in the case of azimphosmethyl. Also, phosmet eludes earlier than azimphosmethyl. Pay attention to the retention times and exclusive mass transitions. The second case of common mass transitions found in AUPT was the pair tebuconazole and prochloras. In this case, a fragment of prochloras fragments in an analogous way to tebuconazole, resulting in an interference for the 308 to 70 mass transition. Tebuconazole alludes earlier, so using the exclusive mass transition and the retention times, Correct identification should be possible in all cases. And now, let's end with four pairs found within regular routine laboratory work. The first pair is chlorpyrifos and fempropathrine. Remember to avoid the 350 M2Z precursor ion in the case of chlorpyrifos and to use the chlorpyrifos isotopologue with two chlorine-35 atoms and one chlorine-37 isotope. For dimethyldinfos and malathion, the mass transition in common is 331 to 127. As for malathion, there isn't another precursor ion to check for, but the issues associated with the 331 precursor ion for dimethylvinfos can be solved employing the dimethylvinfos isotopologue containing two chlorine-35 atoms and one chlorine-37 isotope, which results in a proton adduct precursor ion of 333 M to Z. Despite being constitutional isomers, fortunately, there is one mass transition exclusive to terbutylazine and another one for propazine. Nevertheless, make sure to pay attention to the 230 to 146 mass transitions and retention times. Finally, one of the most complicated pairs in this online video tutorial. Aldecarbsyl phone and butoxycarboxin share at least three mass transitions. Ion ratios are slightly different, and although resolution is poor, they do not fully overlap. Pay attention to the retention times and their respective ion ratios. Thank you all very much for your attention. We from the URL of V hope this tutorial was useful for you. In the next slide, you will find some self-assessment questions should you like to revise the topics covered in this video.